Hi, my name is Felix Jimeronika, and I'm a senior lecturer in church history at Nzuz University in Malawi. My title to the presentation that I'm giving today is From Revival to Apostolic Networks and Beyond, The Emergence and Development of Malawian Neocharismatic Churches, Introduction. Though attempts have been made to trace a trajectory of the genesis of Malawian Neocharismatic Churches from some Western source, evidence has not been proffered for such a claim. Munyenyembe attempted to draw a trajectory from the 1960s Charismatic Revival in America to the genesis of Neocharismatic Churches in Malawi, but evidence of such connections is absent as there are no tangible connections between the Charismatic Revival in America and Holiness Revival influenced parachurch organizations operating in Malawi, such as Scripture Union, New Life for All, and Students' Christian Organization of Malawi. Chakanza speculates that independent, non-denominational evangelical groups have been started by Malawians through probably the influence of American evangelicals, but he also proffers no evidence of such influences. More recently, Gadam and Hofmeyer have argued that the beginning of near charismatic churches, which they call charismatic churches, is to be traced to the proliferation of Pentecostal and charismatic literature and audio cassettes from America, which greatly impacted the born again movement in Blantai. To favorably influence them towards Pentecostalism so that Reverend Stuart Lane could easily establish what they claim is the first charismatic mission in Blantai, called the Cornelius Fellowship. About the same time, Barbara Tippett's Mustard Seed Foundation started meeting at the Polytechnic, where Reverend Lane was also the college chaplain and ran the Malawi Polytechnic Fellowship from 1981 until it moved to downtown Blantyre in 1984, where it became a church, Blanta Christian Center, now called Word Alive Ministries. So what really is the genesis of neo-charismatic churches in Malawi? This essay, which is a which is based on documentary analysis and participant interviews, traces the history and emergence of Malawi neo charismatic churches through their six developmental phases from the 1970s Blanter Born Again Awakening and classifies them into two categories. It looks at the influential people and groups in the movement and shows that Malawi neo charismatic churches as African initiated churches are a third wave of African agency in relation in religion which has decolonized and contextualized Christianity to address African religious concerns such as witchcraft and prosperity. By examining modernization, secularization, relative deprivation, and globalization theories, I advanced the idea that Malawian neocharismatics should be understood as an African religious social movement. Moreover, they're historically, sociologically, and ecclesiologically different from both classical Pentecostalism and the charismatic movement. I conclude the article by offering proof that Holy Cross Pentecostal Church is the first Malawian neocharismatic church. Historical Development and Types of Neocharismatic Churches. The 1970s and early 1980s were a season of revival in Malawi's urban, urban centers, beginning with the Blantyre Spiritual Awakening. This revival was fanned by both evangelical and Pentecostal cross-pollination through the cooperation of church and parachurch organizations. It was from this ferment, this ferment of revival that neocharismatic churches emerged. Klaus Fiedler has noted the evolutionary pattern from an initial interdenominational phase to a fellowship phase, to a ministry phase, and finally to a neo-charismatic church. I'll venture a further development from the church phase to an apostolic network and or, in a few cases, a neo-charismatic denomination and that the phenomenon can be categorized into two types. Developmental phases. Interdenominational phase is the first stage of the development of neo charismatic churches, which began in the Blanta Born Again Revival. It began as an alliance of church and parachurch organizations that sought to stem the tide of liberal theology in the Malawian church by aggressive evangelism, which led to the formation of the Evangelical Fellowship of Malawi in 1961 and to the, Keswick, uh, to the first Keswick Convention in 1962. Not satisfied with progress thus far, New Life for All, the evangelistic arm of Evangelical Fellowship of Malawi under Jack Selfridge began open air gospel campaigns in the cities of Blantar in the city of Blantar in 1971. Some of the organizations involved included Students Christian Organization of Malawi, New Life for All, Every Home Crusade, and Keswick Convention. Churches also cooperated, such as St. Columba CCAP under Reverend Kunga and Kanjid's Assemblies of God under Reverend Gideon Bomba. The second stage, the fellowship phase, developed the New Life for All evangelistic group set up preaching points in various parts of the city, where further, which further developed the 
to be lunch hour fellowships in commercial centers and prayer groups in the townships. Lunch hour fellowships proliferated in the city from around 1974 in sites such as New Life for All Offices on Livingston Road, Malai Railways Training Center in Limby, and the Red Cross Hall at Jinnera Corner which spread into the townships of Blantyre. Kawamba cites that the Limbi Fellowship had Emmanuel Chinquita, Mary Ntaba, and Kamzati Chombo among its leaders, whereas Wilson Chisambiro and Mr. Mataya were foundational to the, establish the establishment of the Red Cross Hall Fellowship. Selfridge also notes the genesis of prayer groups on, in commercial and industrial areas in Blantyre as beginning with two believers praying together during their lunch break and the idea spreading out so that there were as many as 450 involved in such prayer around the city. The ministries phase is a third phase. There were ministries that emerged from the fellowships and the evangelistic fervor of those years. Typically, such ministries would begin as followers would cluster around a strong leader with a specialized ministry call and together minister to their populace, though never on Sunday morning, so as to ensure that every member was still a part of his or her local church. Andrew Gabriel's ministry was rife with miraculous occurrences from its very beginning in 1973 and causes stir in blunter townships such as Sochi East, Zimbangwa, Chimankunda, Chilobwe, and Naocha. The new, the new charismatic church phase was many times fortuitous. Many ardent members of mainstream churches faced disciplinary action in their churches for being involved in the born again movement, especially the recalcitrant that espoused speaking in tongues and open air preaching. This led to wrangles within churches, the case of charismatic Presbyterians who called themselves concerned born again Christians and the blunder synod of the Church of Central Africa Presbyterian, CCAP, in the mid-1990s resulted in the formation of the Presbyterian Church of Malawi, PCM. Roman Catholic priest Mark Ambalazaza was excommunicated from the church in 1988 due to his healing ministry to form a split off the Charismatic Redeemed Renewal Ministries International. Even missionary-initiated Pentecostals provided members to the neo-charismatic churches or their split-offs became neo-charismatic, such as the Apostolic Faith Mission in Malawi, from which Living Waters Church International founder, Apostle Stanley S. Ndovi, seceded in 1985. In order to meet the needs of excommunicated church members and others who were becoming increasingly dissatisfied with the ministry or restrictions in their local churches, some ministries fill that void in the members' lives by meeting on Sunday mornings and thereby becoming a church like the Sunday afternoon Pentecostal Revival Crusade Fellowship at Livimbo Primary School in Lilongwe, which switched to meeting in the morning in 1995 and became the Calvary Family Church branch there. The apostolic network phase is the fifth stage. The formation of new charismatic churches increased their favor for evangelism so that just as believers gathered around a gifted leader in the ministry phase, local congregations are, plant, are planted that cluster around the ministry founder. The founder is understood as a person called by God to lead the organization and functions as a, as a patriarchal or metrical figure in this grouping of churches which operate more relationally than bureaucratically. He, she is charismatic in the sociological sense and his position as leader is never contested as there are no elections. The semblance of a bureaucracy that exists is more functional, mainly for administrative purposes, so that network seems a more apt description for these organizations. The titles of neo-charismatic church founders have evolved with the phases of their churches. Of their churches. The early leaders of neo-charismatic churches, such as Madali Sombewe, Calvary Family Church, Stanley S. Ndovi, Living Waters International Church, Willie Chaponda, Mastered Seed, and Felix Zalimba, All for Jesus, went by the appellation evangelists during the ministry phase, became pastors in the congregation phase, and are now called apostles in the network phase. Other founders in the network phase are called bishops such as Geoffrey Matoga of the Faith of God. This change is a reflection of their different functions as they are organizing, as their organizations develop. Since apostle is a distinctly neo-charismatic notion on the contemporary Malawian ecclesiastical scene as opposed to bishop, I prefer to call these churches apostolic networks when they function in the mode just, de just described. The past decade has also witnessed the proliferation of the prophet of the prophet as founder. The neo-charismatic denomination phase is the, is the last. When a charismatic leader dies, the tendency is for the religious movement to find ways to routinize that charisma by building a bureaucratic leadership that is marked by more complex procedures and decision-making processes so that there is a switch from charismatic leadership to legal rational leadership in which authority is inherent in the office. There are a few neo-charismatic denominations that 
that bureaucratically, that act bureaucratically, like the Presbyterian Church of Malawi, PCM, which has sessions, presbyteries, and the Senate. Will the near charismatic churches remain apostolic networks or, or evolve into denominations replete with a bureaucracy, with democratic decision-making processes remains to be seen as many of these nascent movements are still in the shadows of their relatively young founders. Types of neocharismatic churches. Neocharismatic churches can be further subdivided into apostolic and prophetic types. Apostolic neocharismatic churches are led by an apostle or a bishop who is usually the founder or the foundress. Teaching on various themes deemed of import to their audiences and preaching from the Bible features more than prophetic utterances and exorcisms in their services and generally exhibit the neocharismatic characteristics discussed above. Prophetic neocharismatic churches are led by a prophet or prophetess who tends to be less formal educated than in the first type. They are pardoned after the prophet healing spiritual AICs and exhibit the same characteristics such as emphasis on spiritual power, use and sale of symbolic objects such as blessed water or anointing oil for healing. Their worship services tend to be longer in duration, tend to center on exorcisms and prophecies, while preaching and teaching of scripture takes a less prominent role. Examples include T.B. Joshua's Synagogue of All Nations in Nigeria, Prophet Shepherd Bushiri's Enlightened Christian Gathering, which is founded in Zuzu in Malawi, but is now headquartered in Pretoria, South Africa. Prophet Justice Hara of, of uh, Christ Ambassadors, who relocated from the longer Malawi to Johannesburg, South Africa, and Prophet Wakisa Chizaso of Restoration International Christian Center in the longer Malawi, amongst many others. An African Social Movement. An African Social Religious Movement. Several attempts have been made at applying sociological theories to Pentecostal charismatic movements such as modernization, secularization, relative deprivation, and globalization, but the neo-charismatic movement should be seen as an African African religious movement. The modernization secularization theory asserts that modernization occurs when a society is transformed from a pre-modern industrial economy to a modern economy which is also complemented by secularization. While modernization deals with the social, secularization deals with the cultural, so that as modernizing societies become more pluralistic, society becomes less religious. However, this theory has been, has been challenged by the fact of the pro proliferation of religion in many societies that are modernizing, such as in Africa, Latin America, and Asia. Deprivation theory sees the genesis of Pentecostal charismatic movements as based on human need. Deprivation is the theoretical framework of Chankaza, who utilizes a political variation of the deprivation theory when he asserts that, quote, given this, the political setup of a one-party state, opportunities for influencing others are more easily available within the context of religion, end of quote. Van Dyck echoes the same light of thought when he deems the evangelistic endeavors of the young Puritan preachers in post-independence Malawi as contending for intellectual space within the confines of a gerontocratic one-party state in Kamuzu Banda's Malawi in the late 1980s. Responding to Van Dyck, Klaus Fiedler queries why there was no no decline in the born-again phenomenon after 1994 when Malawi became a multi-party state. Further, Fiedler, Fiedler notes that these theories fail to explain both the rapid proliferation of Pentecostalism in developing countries like Malawi, where the majority of the population are poor, both Pentecostal and non-Pentecostal, and the increasing numbers of new charismatics who tend to be urban and middle class. The inadequacies of the preceding theories based on social Darwinism led to a further development, the globalization discourse. Paul Gifford has been an early champion of this viewpoint, seeing Southern African born-again movements as instruments of the American religious right through their alliance with American missionary organizations in a process of Americanization, not Christianization, whose Christian fundamentalist message was important to transform the African social political situation. Harry England evaluates claims to independency by two Pentecostal or near charismatic churches in the township of Chinsap and Ilongwe as religious extraversion, a means of utilizing international links as resources for growth and consolidation of local movement of a local movement and its leaders, which satisfies their ambitions to be a part of the global community, thereby escaping Africa's marginalization in the world. Anderson surmises that the globalization America 
Pentecostalization theory is really a conspiracy theory that fails to comprehend that Pentecostalism is more concerned with practice than ideology or theology. That the local international relationship is of such an eclectic nature that not only does the local party access international resources, but the international party uses the local party to boost its international image and financial sponsorship base. That globalization of Pentecostalism be understood as referring to geographical extent and that globalization is both defined and limited by the local context so that it is reinterpreted and conditioned by the social and religious cultural context making Americanization, the Americanization claims seem implausible. Neo charismatic churches may be seen as a subset of a larger religious movement that has fluid boundaries and membership comprising of classical Pentecostals Protestant and Catholic Charismatics and other AICs who hold a similar worldview. Together they comprise, they comprise a religious social movement that is engaged in by persons attempting to make sense of and thus, being cogn and thus bring cognitive order to a complex and sometimes hostile world. The movement is mostly urban owing to its beginnings in the urban revival in the cities of Malawi but is, is increasingly becoming rural. Rooting the faith in the African soil, dealing with Ufiti. Neo charismatics take seriously the African world, worldview, and experience, and thereby have contextualized Christianity in the African soil by deconstructing the naturalistic missionary Christianity worldview with the embrace of both traditional and modern social cultural elements. Fanbrugge observed that Chewa religion functioned to support people through suffering as it offered an explanation for it and acted as a coping mechanism. However, the Christianity that Western missionaries proclaimed had what Hebert called the flow of the excluded middle, a naturalistic worldview that makes a false dichotomy between the spiritual and the physical. Hebert traced this to the worst adoption of a platonic dualism in the 17th and 18th centuries that resulted in the secularization of science and the mystification of religion, which effectively created an excluded middle in which there was a disconnect between the mystical world of religion with its faith, visions, and dreams, and that of science, which is based on certitude, experience, experimentation, and proof. It is this insensitivity to the African worldview, such as in the area of dreams, that Fulatamoyo argues was one of the precipitating factors for the emergence of AICs. On the other hand, the bipolarity of the charismatic movement spans both traditional and modern social cultural elements. So says Rodin Munyanyembe, who hails this as the key to their movement's popularity, since these churches address issues such as witchcraft and spirit possession, which while simultaneously responding to modern issues with street children ministries, electronic music, and entrepreneur seminars. The sensitivity to the African worldview is evident in, in neocharismatic concern, in some cases preoccupation with issue, issues of witchcraft, healing, and prosperity. It is noteworthy that Van Brugger recorded about 65% of deaths, that's 296 of 451, in his catchment area to have been attributed to Ufiti or witchcraft. Furthermore, modernization has not eradicated the, this ancient belief amongst Malawians as can be adduced from witchcraft stories that constantly feature in the media to the point that the Malawi Law Commission is in the process of reviewing the archaic anti-witchcraft act. In Area 18 Air Lilongwe, many mothers made their way to the late Apostle Nelly Chigamba's house where they would take their children in suspected instances of Ufiti or witchcraft. Closely related to Ufiti is Satanism, which involves human sacrifices and drinking blood as forms of worshiping sa Satan. Underlying all this is the belief in an omnipotent God who is greater than Ophiti. However, the people administering the exorcism are supposed to be born again and baptized in the Holy Spirit who believe in God's ability and believe in God's ability to destroy demonic strongholds. Notwithstanding the dangers of what Opoko Onyina terms witch demonology, the amalgam of African traditional views on witchcraft and Western teachings on demonology that incorporates generational curses and territorial spirits, there are positive aspects to witch demonology as it solves the problem of those that are fearful of ancestral spirits, generational curses, and witches. This, of course, is not a claim that all new charismatic healing claims are, tr are true or efficacious as some claims have been proven to be false. Hence, the near charismatic practice of deliverance from witchcraft, evil spirits, curses, sickness, and poverty has contextualized the Christian faith to the African soil. 
a third wave of African agency, not Pentecostal or charismatic, but neo-charismatic. Neo-charismatic churches are the third wave of African ecclesiastical initiatives, beginning with African independent churches, the African indigenous churches, and can be termed African initiated churches and should not be confused with the charismatic or Pentecostal movements. African independent churches, also called Ethiopian or African uh, circa 1900s, are the first wave. The Ethiopian African churches, for whom independence from missionary domination was an issue, and therefore the term African independent churches is more apt, arose as a political and administrative reaction to European mission churches in the early part of the 1900s. Chakanza observes the political radical radicalism of these pioneering independent churches in Malawi. African, African indigenous churches or prophet healing or spiritual churches are the largest AIC grouping elsewhere in the continent, though not in Malawi. It seems that the prophet healing element has not been an emphasis in indigenous Malawian AICs in pre-charismatic revival Malawi, which led, noted the absence of prophets in his study of AICs in Mulanja and Chikwawa districts between 1958 and 1959. A more recent study of Zionist Malawi placed them at around 100,000 adherents. African initiated churches or neo charismatic churches, circa 1970s, are the third wave. They are newer but tend to be largest, to be the largest and most influential organizations in their in their countries, as is the case in Malawi. They have benefited from an influ influx of members from the older European mission funded churches and the prophet healing churches in the past two decades. They are best called African initiated churches, which neither questions nor presupposes their independence from foreign influence, as in African independent churches, nor their, indig nor their indigenousness, as in African indigenous churches, but simply points to their genesis by Africans. They emphasize the power and gifts of the Holy Spirit. They are, to varying extents, influenced by North American Pentecostalism in leadership patterns, liturgy, and the prosperity message, are founded by charismatic, well-educated, though not necessarily in theology, and younger, and younger people renowned for their homiletic and leadership prowess. They are also opposed traditional practices consumption of tobacco and alcohol, and symbolic healing objects. They tend to have a younger, more formally educated, and less impoverished membership who are viewed by the older AICs as attacking African values. Klaus Fiedler questions the validity of the qualities of independent and instituted in the discussion of neo charismatic churches when they are clearly different from the earlier AICs. Others call them the New Apostolic Reformation churches, independent Pentecostal churches, new Pentecostal churches, charismatic churches, or even independent charismatic or Pentecostal churches. I prefer to call such churches neo charismatic as opposed to charismatic since the charismatic revival did not result in new churches or denominations but rather renewal. But, but rather renewal movements within existing ecclesiastical structures. Neo charismatics are not Pentecostal for several reasons. Historically, they come from a different revival, the Blanta Born Again Awakening of the 1970s and 1980s, while Pentecostals hail from the 1906 Pentecostal Azusa Street Revival from which Malawi, Machona, or migrant Pentecostalism hails. Ecclesiologically, they believe in the continuing offices of apostles and prophets, while Pentecostals and charismatics believe such offices ceased through the gifts though the gifts continue hence they are partial secessionists when it comes to these offices sociologically they are an urban phenomenon that began in blantyre and spread to other rural areas whereas the first pentecostal churches such as apostolic faith mission and assemblies of god began in rural areas when Pente when pentecostalized machona or migrant workers returned to their villages from zimbabwe and south africa respectively organizationally they are led by charismatic as opposed to bureaucratic leaders both in the theological and sociological sense while pentecostal denominations are governed by elected officials holy cross pentecostal church the first malawian neo charismatic church it was on 22nd June 1979 in Area 12 in Lalongwe, while nursing the wounds of a failed Andrew Gabriel Evangelistic Association meeting in Lalongwe, caused by one of the mainline churches collusion with the police, that Lastin Kachingwe, Harry S. Gama, and George Upapiri together heard the voice of God telling them that he had a great work for them to touch the nations. This was confirmation for them of what others had previously told them. After being released by Gabriel to start a new ministry, the three moved to Blantyre with their families and started Holy Cross Church as it was initially known. This means that Holy Cross Pentecostal Church started in 1979 when the three heard God's confirmation that the ministry 
should become a church and therefore it is the first near charismatic church in Malawi. Holy Cross Pentecostal Church membership application forms submitted to the Evangelical Association of Malawi, which has said that the church, which has said that the church was started in 1974 in Blantyre by the three by the three after praying and fasting is a collapsing of the ministry phase and the neo charismatic church phase of holy cross pentecostal church in this application dated 15 september 1997 holy cross pentecostal church stated it had 63 churches and 21 pastors though holy cross pentecostal church's certificate of incorporation under the trustees incorporation act 1962 and the government of malawi with the government of malawi is dated 10th january 1995 this may have been due to the restrictions on church registration that prevailed under the banda regime regarding religion which was eased in the multi-party era Conclusion. New charismatic churches in Malawi are not a foreign import from the global charismatic revival in the West. They are an African initiated phenomenon which emerged out of the Blanta born again awakening in a cross pollination of both of both evangelical and Pentecostal piety. New charismatic churches have developed through six developmental phases into a two-fold typology of apostolic and prophetic churches. As African initiated churches, they are a third wave of African agency in religion, which has decolonized and contextualized Christianity to address African religious concerns such as witchcraft and prosperity. Since they attempt to make sense of and bring cognitive order to the African experience, they should be understood as an African religious social movement. Moreover, they are historically, sociologically, and ecclesiologically different from both classical Pentecostalism and the charismatic movement that they require different typology to better map Pentecostalism in Malawi and Africa as a whole. Thank you for paying attention.